Well, hello there, folks. It's been a long road on building with KC. From the border island that we built in episode 1, to the Ezra tree and the botanical gardens that we did in the most recent episode, we have built up so many different structures already in this series, and I think I know exactly where I want to go next. I have so many plans for this world, and all of them are locked behind finishing this city. Or are they? If we take a look at our map right here, right in the slap bang center you can see the market square. And our city is going to sit right here. Although right now it's just one straight road with three giant builds in it. And while I am incredibly proud of how this entire place looks, the city is my biggest project yet and there's lots that I want to do in it. And while this city is our current main project, Building with KC is all about building up multiple kingdoms that are connected with detailed lore. This swamp already has some lore attached with it. There was ogres that came here and a really bizarre sheep over there. And when the ogres came over here, they turned this swamp into a bustling kingdom. But there's no ogres here. In fact, there's nothing here but a leveled out piece of land. And if we turn our attention back to the map, you can see the swamp over here. I have plans for a little forest like right here with another small kingdom over here, maybe a village or a hamlet. I want to put a dwarven kingdom inside of a mountain range over here and use the mountains to border our land. And so today I want to focus on the borders of our kingdom. I want to know exactly where the city begins and where the city ends. So before we find out if I am truly Altair reincarnated and can do the swan dive that the Assassins of Assassin's Creed can do, I'm going to ask you if you could like and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's get into the episode. Nailed it! Casey. Now I would like to start over here where I plan to put the Dwarven Mountains. And I've got a bit of an idea for this. You see, you can already see sort of somewhat of a blue circle. The main mountain range is going to be a circle. And inside of the inner circle is going to be where the Dwarves live. You can kind of gauge a rough height there. Now, I have tried a few times to do these mountains and I never did find a way to make it work. But I think I've discovered something that's going to make it significantly easier. You see, rather than trying to build a giant mountain all over the place, I would like to have multiple mountains, all with different peaks and different sizes. You can see I want one to sort of come out down here. But this is kind of the main area where I want the dwarves to live, so I want to get the outline put in place. So you can get a feel from this circle how big the center of this mountain range is going to be. It's going to be very big. It's almost as big as our city. It's going to be quite huge. But obviously there's going to be mountains in here and there's going to be a Dwarven Kingdom and everything. It's going to actually look pretty cool. Trouble is, Tinker's put this mountain here. There's a giant redwood and a second one, plus all of these already generated Minecraft mountains. So I'm going to do what any modded player would do. So with this all set up, we should just be able to flick this lever. The builder turned quarry is already doing its job, but the redwood tree is starting to be leveled. But this little machine has a large job to do. So while it gets to work, so will we. I've been playing around between episodes with kind of what I want for a wall design. When doing this wall, I need to keep three important factors in mind. The first is repeatability. You know, I need to make sure that I can build this wall sort of going all the way around here, all the way around here all the way around here and all the way into the mountains. It's going to be a big wall with many sections. So the design itself needs to be simple, elegant and repeatable. The second is where this wall meets this gatehouse. We're obviously going to have to do some jiggery pokery to get it to fit. But if we look at the block palettes, we need to make sure they match. And the third thing is keeping in mind this keep right here. This is made with a lot darker materials and the wall does kind of clash with the stone and the brick. So we need to make sure it also fits in with this build here. So I'm going to focus on this section of wall right here so we can get the design down. And then I can take this design and I can put it in the other places as we work on the boundaries of our city. Now the wall itself is broken down into three different sectors. We've got these five ones, which is what I've taken the liberty of designing here. I quite like this. Looks really, really good. We've got some three ones. 
and we've got a couple of seven ones and this is how the war will always repeat it'll either be a three five or seven sometimes we may change at right angles sometimes we may go like we've done here kind of diagonal and i want to use you, know, you can see it kind of goes diagonal not straight which is what i like i know a lot of old like medieval cities used to be kind of squarish and we're going to try and replicate that without it feeling like a square now i definitely want to hang something from these chains i'm just not entirely sure what yet i might hang a bush i might hang some lights i don't think i want to have too many lights just kind of the odd one maybe just one and the middle one would be actually quite nice rather than having them all the way around it just looks really nice but we won't be looking too hard at these walls we'll just kind of be glancing by them and i like how these stand out i don't want the three ones to stand out all that much they look kind of nice plain so we'll kind of keep them simple but I want to turn my attention back to the mountains for a moment. Now I want to kind of fill this area. You can see the circle. Although it looks like the builder didn't get all of it. Sometimes it could be a bit janky. So we might have to go through here and just kind of clip in where it didn't get. By hand wasn't working. Every time I use the draconic stuff for power it causes a massive amount of lag. And the blocks just take forever to mine. I tried doing it with the atomic assembler. Did not go well. So I'm resorting to the fact that I am a modded player. And we'll just use a modded tool to do it. And after sorting the snowballs out that have cluttered this system up, we should see our clearing quarry working. It is great. It's throwing stuff in there. Fantastic. Now we just gotta wait a little bit. I'm gonna work on these three sections, and I think I'm gonna try and keep it super simple. So I'm trying in the design, and I quite like this. I I've discovered that you these chains actually go diagonally like this, where you put a block underneath them. So we can hang stuff from them and I, and I really, really like that. I think that looks really, really cool. It adds a little bit of foliage to it. It keeps it in with the style. It also blends it with the other keep over here. This one that's right here because this has a lot of dark material in it. And it also blends it with our kingdom too. I like it. This is simple. This is what I want. I don't want your eye drawn too much to the three ones. Just a little bit. The quarry did a great job. It's already clear. So I'm going to take this chest. I'm going to turn it all white so that we have the dirt chest. We'll give it a little bit of power. Check that it's all right. Turn it on. Check that it's running. And that should start placing us a bunch of dirt down and get us a nice big dirt circle. Yay, we got dirt. Look at this. Dirt, 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 Obsidian. There's a bit of obsidian in here. Where's the obsidian coming from? That's okay, there's only two blocks. I, 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 can, I can handle that. Minor adjustment. I am filtering out the obsidian. You know, I'm loving the fact that when we come out here, the walls up there, we can actually see something on the skylight. It's so lovely. So I've got the most of the wall now in place. We've got these three sections done. I've only got the seven sections left to do. The turrets and then the blending over there. And of course, the walkway on top. Uh, but that's, that's in a moment. Right now, we need to turn our attention back to the mountain. Because over here... We got a big dirt circle. And I want to get the first part of the mountains in place. Now, I'm just going to keep them super simple to begin with. We'll detail these out over the course of the series. But for now, I just want to get a general shape in so we can get a feel for how it's going to look. So it's time to load the builder up and pull the lever. And we can see that it's putting down the first layer of the mountain. We got the first circle in place. Now I want to do the inner one to get a bit more of a feel. So we can just do this. Check this is in the right place. This kind of looks right from what I want. So we got the first part of the mountain in place. The next one's going to be pushed back a block and then go up into a peak. And I think that's looking really good. I don't know how this is going to look in the end, but we'll, we'll see. It's all about testing and trying new things. So flick the lever. I actually set up an ender chest, so this was much easier. I didn't have to keep babysitting it every two seconds. The second layer is looking good. And when the third layer gets put on, it's going to look even better. I think as we sort of progress up and up the mountain and it gets steeper and steeper, it's going to look really kind of cool. So while this gets to work, we can have a little bit of a chat. Now this Dwarven Kingdom is going to have mountains sort of coming all out from all angles of this circle. It won't look like a circle when we're completely done with it. But for now, it will resemble a circle. And I definitely want it to be a circle inside where the Dwarven Kingdom is situated. This way, we know exactly where the kingdom is. It looks different. Our eye is drawn to it on a map. But it is definitely a work in progress that's going to take several episodes to achieve. Right now, I'm just getting basic shapes down. I don't want to texture all of this and make it look more like a mountain with little peaks and dirt patches and stuff. 
when I don't know if I'm going to say bring another small mountain up here, which is going to cover up half of this. Because the outside, I do not want to resemble a circle. It's just the inside that I do. Well, now we've got the first sort of vertical segment in place. We now need to start bringing it back down in kind of a V shape. This thing is quite tall. It goes up not to build height, but very close to it. Uh, we still got some room to play around because I might do some like custom clouds and maybe some smoke rings above the certain peaks. I, I don't know yet. I just kind of want to get this in place, which means I've got to bring down it on the inside. <laughs> oh, joys. More of sitting here and flicking the lever. Only this time, it's the right lever, crunk. Sometimes your first idea is not your best idea. This is not giving me the vibe that I want, but I've got an idea. So, take two. And just like that, we're back to a blank canvas. I'm going to try and make it a little bit steeper this time and make each incline a little bit more thicker. So whereas before we had one and then the next one would be one across and going up, I'm actually going to go across four. So we're going to have four at this height. Then we're going to go up. We're going to have another four at the next height. Then we're going to go up and have three, up and three, so on and so forth. And that should create a nice steep curve i think it looked really good i've also filled the chest up with different sorts of resources hopefully these keep flowing in at the rate that they are used and we should get a nice variant uh, but i guess only time will tell uh, let's flick the liver and see how it goes so just as soon as it uses a block it actually replenishes it i like it because it doesn't use one stack at a time it actually drags from multiple stacks so it allows the stacks to keep stocked up and as we kind of look over here, that's creating a texture. I've done a few of the layers, and I'm definitely starting to see this more like a mountain than our first attempt. It just goes up a lot more gradual. There's a lot of, like, fine-tuning that we'll do. And I've got a plan for, like, a gatehouse that's going to go on here that's going to sort of border us to the town, or to the city, should I say, going kind of here and then into the mountain. So you can kind of see the idea that I've got here. This is actually a bit smaller than I want now. It's a little bit bigger than this. But yeah, this, this this looks really good. I can't wait to get all of it in place and the mountain kind of goes up there and then sort of stand over here and take a look at it from a distance and just see how the shadows and the fog hides it. I think it's going to look really cool then. Like, uh, I do realize that like back here, I, I, I mostly out of render distance, but... Uh, I have my render distance actually set up to full, so it should actually go like a fog at some point. Nevertheless, I'm just catching up on some whip while I just keep on pulling this lever, adjusting the shape card every now and again to get the shape just right. Alas, the final lever has been pulled. We have these skeleton imprints of the mountains. They're all in place now. One, two, three, four, five, six back there and six back on the outside. It's all good there's a bunch of space inside of these it's quite a big perimeter if we look on the map you can see just the kind of perimeter that it takes up on the outside is quite big whereas on the inside it's not as big i still think it's going to be really cool having like a dwarven city in here it's gonna be so cool like having all things sort of built into the mountains i mean we can have some more peaks in here and i i, I don't know yet <laughs> i've got some ideas uh but today is all about just getting a rough outline in place like these mountains are gonna stretch quite high it'll look a lot better when we've got sort of like jagged peaks and it's not all just one smooth peak going around but now i want to turn my attention back to the wall yeah just sort of sitting down here and you can see the outline it's it's gonna look really cool when they're when they're properly done but for now i'm gonna focus on these seven bits of the wall the only bit of the wall we've got left to do and then i need to just decorate it with some foliage but I, I'm not quite sure what I want to do here. I've got a couple of ideas. Let, let's see how they turn out. So I've actually come up with something that I really like. And it is so simple. Look at this. It fits in with the wall. It fits in so well with the wall. And it's just simple. It is so simple. I just can't believe like, I, I, I like that. I can't believe that the first thing I tried was the first thing that I liked. So I've got to do this in all of the other seven places. With those in place, we've got the template of this wall pretty much set in stone. The only things we haven't done are the turrets and the way that it joins with the keep over here. Because right now it looks like a pile of mumbled crap. And I want to get this blending and looking really nice. So it might need a little bit of a redesign of this window. Uh, maybe a little bit of a redesign up here. I'm sure that I can figure something out that's going to keep with this theme and not really make it feel too different, but at the same time, make it blend better than it currently does. Because right now, 
I don't like the way this blends. It's kind of bur breaking the immersion for me. And then we'll have the template of the wall fully done and in place. And then we can go ahead and we can take just the sort of edge, like the the rough etchings of where it's going to go. We can take that sort of around the entire kingdom and get it all locked up to here. So at least we know where the city bounds are. But first, let me get this done. Starting from Iris's keep, we can turn around and now come down a set of stairs and onto the wall. I've gone with a very simple railing. Again, this is something that we want to repeat quite a lot within the kingdom. And I think it looks really good. We've got two different types of iron fences right here. We've got the kind of Eximix smash. And then we've got these square ones here that I think look really, really good. It also looks really good on the map because it gives the wall kind of like a stone edge on the map. So it also looks really good here that I'm super happy with. Uh, I decided to go with light in the middle and dark in the middle. Again, this was mainly due to the map here, just so it gives the map some nice little color and variation. Uh, but we can walk all the way along the wall, all the way to the other side now. Uh, I went with like a simple blend here with just using the glowstone for a little bit of light. And I just kind of made it work a little bit with what we've got. Nothing too much changed on the outside. Uh, there was a little bit of a mix match there. Uh, this one was a lot easier to blend. This just kind of went straight with the first thing that went. Uh, but this one was a little bit of a pain. I had to do some rearranging. I did think about uh, pushing it back because we could knock this back. Let me just uh, put this onto the faster moment. Uh, we could put this back there one. There is a bit of wall there that I don't think I have taken care of. There we go. I patched it up. My next goal is to sort of come inside and try to get some sort of doorway here that leads into the wall. So we can kind of walk through the wall. Now when we come in, we've got a doorway here. It leads into the wall. I'm going to do inside of the wall another time. It's it's not a big deal. But we do have a way inside of it now, which is great. Which brings my next point of focus over here and to these little turrets. I kind of know what I want to do on these turrets. So it's just a case of getting them in place. As we leave the door, we've got the turrets in place. I really like them. They're simple yet elegant and they get the job done. I put the flag on top. I've draped sort of like a kind of version of the flag as a banner from the sides here. And I think that looks really, really good. I just didn't want to add any more detail like we've got going on here because I wanted these to be something separate. But I did try to keep in theme with what we've got going on there with the roofs. We've kind of got like a mini roof. And then we have a second roof going on. Actually, that's kind of like a third roof, I suppose. But we've got that going on here. I've used a coal in them. If we have a look at the doorways over here, you can see I've also used the limestone and the granite and I think that just adds a little pop of color to it we've got the dangling lanterns I think it looks really really cool overall I'm happy with how this wall turned out and while we probably won't get to the point of putting in the actual wall going all the way around the kingdom I do kind of want to get the outline of the wall in place so we know roughly where the wall is going to go and I think I want to start from this side and sort of bring it over here now on this side things are going to be slightly different and that's because of the way the keep is built. If you look, we've got the doorway over on that side of the keep, which means the wall sits kind of behind this bit right here. If I were to do that on that side, we'd be coming out of the side of this gate here and sort of into the front here. And I want both of the gates to lead into the city, not outside of the city. So I'm going to bring this wall out of the side of the turret here, out of the side of the keep. I think that'll look really good and it'll give us a little bit of variation on it. So we've kind of got the wall coming into there and then it kind of comes out there. And I think that'll look really good. I have started shaping the wall now. You can see it's coming out of the turret as I said. It goes here. We're actually going to turn a corner right here. It's going to require some jiggery pokery on the opposite side. But we can follow it all the way around. It sort of snakes its way here. Again, we turn another corner here. Uh, this one is actually going to have a turret on it. So what we've got going on here here we're gonna have one here and then if we kind of follow this over here we'll see that we have another turret right here and then going this way it will go into the barracks now I'm not exactly certain on what design that I'm gonna have for this barracks uh, but I do know I kind of want one building there one building there a sort of curved inner wall and then a turret or tower over here with kind of an archway entrance here uh, I don't know what what the block palette's gonna be yet or how this is actually going to go. This is going to be a future episode. But for now we can see that it comes out of the barracks again. Again you'll be able to go into the wall from the barracks. That's kind of part of the plan. And then it comes over here into another turret. Where it actually just turns a corner just before the turret. To add some variation. 
So you can see the wall kind of goes over here. And that's looking a lot better now that we've got that shape in. It makes me feel like the kingdom's coming alive. Uh, but I am facing a bit of an issue because over here... As you can see, this is the floor right here. And if we keep going, you can see this is the pathway that's going to lead into the center. I definitely want to keep the pathways going straight like that and then coming off like that, at least for the main pathway in the city. I think that'll look really, really cool. Uh, but that puts us kind of here, which is where the gatehouse is going to be, uh, into the city. It's not going to be another keep like this because we've got two. It's just going to be kind of like two turrets either side, if you will. Uh, I'll get to designing that in a moment. Uh, but this I kind of want down here because the elevation of the city is getting higher and higher as we head towards the mountains. And this is a good, I think, 15 or 20 blocks higher than this bit here. So that wall is currently up there at a higher elevation. I kind of want to bring it down to this elevation. You can see I've come uh, with some blocks in here and got the general idea in place. Uh, but there's no blocks to put the wall on. At the minute, I need to get some more terraforming done. We are now able to leave Iris's keep and follow the wall around its many corners through a turret. By continuing around, we will eventually come to the outline of the barrack. I haven't stopped there because we can continue to follow the wall once more, where it will run into what will be the main entrance to our city from the east. So the wall is actually taking shape now. We can see that this is where the main entrance to the city is going to go. I've got a really cool idea for what this is going to look like. This actually might be next episode. Or maybe we focus on, you know, like the fields that I'm going to put here. I don't know. I've got lots and lots of ideas. Lots and lots of ideas and not enough episodes to do them in. I want to do them all at once and that's difficult to do. We've done that now and if we take a look at the map, you can see that we've actually come all the way across here. I kind of like the way this wall looks. It's slightly wonky. Uh, it feels very much like a city. And I think that when we get the the edges in, like we've got here, it's going to look a lot better as opposed to this big blocky square. But now what I need to do is I need to take this wall and I need to marry it up to this keep. The wall now comes out of the second keep. We still need to name this keep. I haven't thought of a name just yet. But it does head all the way along and it meets up with the gatehouse to the city just over there. But before the gatehouse is going to be what I'm calling the Rangers Guild. This is where the archers will train, live, stay, work, sleep, eat, repeat, you know. Uh, tied into the wall. You can see the wall comes into it from there. Comes into it from there. Uh, we're going to have maybe a gateway just about here. Uh, we got a couple of turrets. We got a couple of round things. We got a wall. Yeah, I think this is actually going to look really cool. If we look at it on the map, uh, it's in this corner. This is kind of the front of the city where we're saying. Uh, so we do want to make sure that both of our barracks and our rangers guild is here on the... Well, this is the eastern side, but it's also the entrance to our city. We've got allies to our northern border. We've got allies to our southern border. We don't need anything there besides we've got the keeps there anyway. Just in case anything that does kick off, we've got a defensive building. So I definitely wanted to put these on this side. Uh, we don't really have much over here, but we are going to have a bit of a gatehouse here. And we've got the mountain range that, that needs a lot of work. But we've got a rough template. I think this is going to look really cool when we get it uh, sort of all done. And we start to get some peaks on here, some snowy peaks. I think it's going to look really, really cool. Uh, but that, that's a future project. This was what I wanted to work on today. And I think it looks really, really cool good uh, i've gone over here look as you can see and i've brought this across and as we head over there you can see the sun is setting behind the keep that's actually a really pretty visual there i like that a lot but yeah the wall comes out it comes across uh, we've kind of mirrored what we have going on down here we've got the two turrets down here so i've added in the one turret here it's almost in line it's not exactly in line just to create some variation uh, and the second turret is over here i've kind of tried to peel this back so it kind of goes backwards so it gives me some more room to sort of play with at the front here i think this is going to be like kind of a cliff face a drop into abyss's land i think, I think that'd probably be the best way to do it there isn't enough place to do a bunch of fields we may be able to get like one in uh before a cliff in i i, I don't know but that, that's a future project that's actually something i want to work on in the next episode i want to focus on doing the land around here and the land around here because right now we just got these straight lines and i don't like it but that's a future project this is today's project Yeah. 
shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost so we now have the walls of our kingdom in place. We know where our land borders the other regions. We've still got a lot of work to do and I look forward to the next episode where I'm going to try and focus on that border region, adding in farmlands, getting in pathways, so that in the future episodes we can start building other kingdoms and take a small break from the city. But that is going to do it for this episode. If you could leave the video a like and subscribe, you can watch the series and the playlist over to the right hand side of the screen. And also below the video, you can check out my other channels where I upload all kinds of videos. But as always, I'm Casey. You're the awesome folks. Thank you so much for watching. Take care now. And I'll see you in the next one.